Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Lu. It has been brought to my attention that there are a few signs that Singapore economy is slowing down or potentially experiencing some form of a weakness. So let me give you some of these signals that I'm seeing and let me know whether you concur with what you're seeing on the ground as well. And if I'm correct, you know, that spells uh, quite a lot of trouble for Singapore. Uh, but let's watch on, shall we? So again, uh, this is a disclaimer. I'm not telling you to buy or sell stocks. I'm just giving you an economic outlook. And let's go. This insight uh, came to me when I was talking to Kate. Uh, Kate is my daughter. And Kate has been telling me that most of her friends are having a very tough time looking for a job. Now, Kate is graduating and many of her friends are also graduating and they've been having a hard time looking for jobs as fresh graduates. I thought that at one point in time, we are having so tough a time looking for people who are willing to take up uh, jobs in our companies. But now I think the reverse is happening. So by looking at the news report, uh, it seems to be true. The title is uh, Amidst an Uncertain Outlook and Spread of Layoffs, Fresh Graduates Are Finding Hard in the Job Market. And if you look at some of these news reports, uh, competition is fierce for this 23-year-old and many of peers, with more than 100 applicants vying for the same role. Uh, I don't know what job is that, but certainly 100 for the same job is quite uh, quite significant. So there is a slight dip in the graduates finding job within six months. Uh, I would still think that 90% is still very high. But certainly, recent graduates are finding more difficulty securing full-time jobs. Many of the companies are preferring fixed-term contracts over full-time permanent ones. And suddenly, this is a very uh, uh, interesting point of concern. So I guess in the case of Kate, uh, she does have many choices. She can easily uh, work in one of my companies or one of my associated companies. But I think for the rest of the people, uh, this is a point of concern that we should uh, drill deep into. And this is not a new thing. I have been talking to a lot of my business friends. Most of them are SMEs uh, owners, and they are telling me the same thing. And their business are quite varied. Uh, I, I've got a whole lot of business friends and friends in logistics, F&B, trading, B2B, e-commerce, whatever. And uh, a lot of them have been telling me that the business uh, year on year has been down you know, uh, recently by 20 30%. And this is truly a point of concern. And I've been uh, trying to figure out why. Guess what? I think recently I got some insights of what this could be caused by. The numbers are backward looking. Non-oil export numbers have came out and I've talked about this before and it came up negative and very significantly negative uh, against the forecast uh, because they were predicting a plus four, it turned out negative four plus percent and this is quite significant. So our exports are falling quite significantly and there should be some flow on effect. Now, when we look at these numbers, uh, it's already one month late. Right now, it's really end of November and we are looking at this October result. So we are already feeling some pressure over this impact. In the Business Times survey, it remains uh, very negative on the profit uh, sentiment for many businesses. And uh, everyone then is just saying that profits uh, really look uh, pretty shitty because of high costs and things like that. And manpower, con manpower cost seems to be a, a, a concern. Many businesses are telling the surveyors that manpower cost is really very significant. And there are increased hikes in s pass, which is a foreign uh, labor uh, concerns and things like that. So profitability is going down. And there are bright sparks within our economy, in particular, finance sector and services sector, and also commerce sector is uh, seeing some expansion as well, but generally all negative. And this is a very interesting survey. Singapore Advanced Estimate uh, done by Manpower Ministry indicated that the proportion of companies that are intending to hire or, or raise wages have been falling very significantly, as you can see here. So these are with plans to hire more people has fallen very significantly down. Those companies that are intending to raise wages uh, has also fallen down uh, quite significantly. This is something that is uh, truly concerned and these are very strong telltale signs that our economy is not doing well. And I've reason to believe that this trend is largely driven by the economic slowdown of China. And why do I say so? Well, it's because uh, China is a huge market for Singapore. And if you look at the exports to China numbers, it's down by 22%. And uh, Hong Kong is also down by about 20% as well. And in the previous month, it was down by 37% uh, year on year. 
And by the way, to Europe and Japan has also gone down quite a lot as well. It's quite a significant fall. Uh, many of these economies are not doing well because of China as well. So actually, all these are inter-co-related. So Hong Kong, of course, is a port of transit uh, for, for many goods entered into China. And Japan and EU are, is highly dependent on China for business. And everything is going down largely because of that. Global report from IMF also said the same thing, right? It says that our global growth is expected to remain lackluster. 3.1% largely due to the softening Chinese economy. While global inflation is declining, uh, Chinese uh, growth is also coming down and as a result, you know, global economy will go down as well. And this is not just my feeling. Uh, analysts are also saying that slowing Chinese growth has a cascading effect across the entire globe, uh, says a Hong Kong-based uh, lead analyst uh, in an economic intelligence unit, quite a prominent unit. The slower Chinese growth and direct consequences for global commodity market, uh, for example, crude oil consumption has gone down significantly and it, that affects uh, global consumption, plus many more, right? For many of our stock market enthusiasts uh, with the Chinese market, uh, look at the stimulus uh, package that has been thrown out as something very positive. I have reminded everybody, if the economy is not sick, there's no reason for the doctor to come and give you medicine. And I think... The Chinese central bank and the policymakers have seen that well ahead of all of us. And that's why they're throwing big stimulus in to try to sustain the, the slowing market. Give you a few points here and there. The Japanese manufacturers are facing earnings drop as a Chinese economy slip, mainly in the automotive and the material industry. And weak demand in China has sent surplus steel and chemical products flowing to around the region. So it's a big hit as well. Same thing in Australia, iron ore, which is their primary product export to mainly to China, is also having a problem. Troubles in the Chinese massive construction sector has seen iron ore prices drop by 30%. And Australia is the world's largest producer of iron ore. And many of these, can you see that now, no, one economy slowdown has now spillover effect. Now then Australia is also a market for Singapore as well. At the very least, Singtel has a big market presence in Australia through Optus. So these are things that, that will hit Singapore in a big way. In Europe, European com companies are taking a hit as well. Chinese slowdown is taking a rising toll on European profits. From luxury brands, LV, Chanel and all this, to car makers, European companies are taking a hit from Chinese slowdown. I'm in Europe right now. There are very few Chinese uh, tourists uh, as compared to the past. And most of the brands are going further down and down and down. I'm not alone feeling this. The stimulus uh, that's been thrown out caused a huge spike in the Hang Seng Index and the Shanghai Index. By now, realism is coming. The stock market is falling and falling and falling. It's no laughing matter. Uh, if the stimulus work, then you know the flow effect on the economy will be great and Singapore will not be hit. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working or is yet to be working. And there's a lot of disappointment and you can see that reflected in the stock market uh, that's related to China. The single big bright spark is the US economy. The US economy is one of the few, but maybe the only economy or strong uh, developed economy that is roaring very strong. The US GDP continued to grow at 2.8% in the third quarter. US is poised to beat the uh, expectation in 2025. U.S. consumer is keeping the economy uh, on solid ground ahead of the election, blah, blah, blah. And with Donald Trump coming in, I, I think most of people believe that U.S. will continue to be strong at the expense of the rest of the world. And today, the S&P 500 has grown phenomenally, right? Today, when we start the market, the S&P 500, I think, broke 6,000 uh, to 6,000 plus. And then, then it softened a bit through profit taking and so and the S&P 500 now has grown by a phenomenal 31% in one year. If this continues for three years, it will grow by 100%. So this is something that I'm not too sure whether it's sustainable, but it's reflective of a powerful US uh, market. So maybe my hunch is wrong that the Singapore economy is actually doing okay. It's just that my few houses here and there are telling me the wrong thing. And it's a too small sample. And hopefully I'm wrong. Because if I'm right, then dark clouds are looming ahead for Singapore. We'll all be in tough times. But if I'm wrong, then things will become better and uh, that will be great. So the only way I can tell whether this is right or wrong is if you were to tell me in your company, your industry, uh, what's happening right now. And let me know.
I would imagine that in the banks, I think it's probably still okay. But I think apart from the banks, uh, very few sectors are probably doing well. Uh, let me know what you're feeling on your ground in the comments below and also tell me in the 1865 channel. And this is something that will help us uh, formulate our prediction and the pulse of the ground. And that will let all of us know whether the dark clouds ahead are forming or not. So with this, thank you for watching and I hope to get your comments. I'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.